You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast, a companion podcast to PillagingJustForFun.com. That's PJ4F.com, the only Raider fan site made by Raider fans for Raider fans. Tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. This episode brought to you by Creative Media Design Studio. Check them out at creativemediamonterey.com. It's time to pillage another podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Stapler, and I like NBA free agency. <laughs> what about you, Chad? Hey, I like it too, man. What can I say? I like it too. It's it's always interesting, always exciting, right? Big Laker fan over here, Che. I'm a big Laker fan, but as we've discussed many a times on this podcast, I'm not the biggest LeBron fan, so don't look for me to be jumping out my seat. You know, hooting and hollering, okay? There's got to be a small part of you that's excited about this. I'm excited that the Lakers are trying to get back into contention. Because yeah. the Lakers are about winning. That's, our, that's what our franchise is about. You know, it's about winning. Um, so, yeah, a part of me is excited because it's telling me that they're trying to win. They're trying to get back into contention. Okay. Um, but, like I said, I don't, don't expect me to just be like, yay, LeBron. What's the next piece of the puzzle this year? Um, next piece of the puzzle? Well, listen. Um, LeBron isn't going to get it done all by himself. Uh, the, the kids are really young, so you can't expect them to like jump up to, you know, all star level just because he's there. Um, you probably need a a, a, a two way player like Kawhi, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which they've been working on. They've been trying to work on, and you probably need a a, a big man, you know, a legit big man that could defend the rim. Um, yeah, someone that can defend the rim, someone that's athletic, someone that's going to get easy buckets. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck. I'm a Warriors fan myself. I think a yes, Warriors, you are. A Warriors Lakers rivalry with talent on both sides of the ball is exciting. Yes, it would be, man. Uh, it would be because the. I mean, if you really look at it, the West is uh, the West isn't what it used to be. Um, there used to be you know at least like four or five teams that were legit contenders yeah. all at one, all at the same time. You know you had Portland's, you had your your San Antonio's, you know you had your Lakers. Um, you know the Suns were in there for a little while, you know. Sure. Um, and it and it's, I mean, there's tough teams in the West, but there's really only a couple teams that are elite in the West right now. Yeah, right? yeah. San Antonio's old. They still play good ball, but that's because they're coached well. But they're not going to beat anybody. They're too old. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, it's 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 needed. They need it needs to to get back to the old the old ways, man. Absolutely. And along the same lines, the East most definitely isn't what it used to be. <laughs> now with LeBron gone, especially. So mm. uh, just want to take this time to remind everybody to check out the Out of Pocket Sports Network. They got their own webpage now. Just search Out of Pocket Sports Network. Put that in your Google machine. You'll yes. get that. Make sure you follow them on Twitter. Um, check out all the episodes that they release. There is a, a Vikings podcast there, which you may or may not want to check out. But it is a good football podcast, so I'd recommend that. And, of course, our sister podcast, Just Win Ladies, working on getting them some better fidelity. But the content yeah. is on point. Yeah. Um, they just had Phil Villapiano's daughter on. They're going to have... Uh, Kenny Stabler's daughter on soon. Nice, man. And we, we're going to work on that, too. But we don't want to crowd their guest list, so maybe we'll have Kendra on in the future. There you go. Um, there you go. We, we don't want to steal their thunder at all. Um, that would be rude, as they say. <laughs> uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, at Pillage, just the number four fun. And, of course, find our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the pillaging podcast. And if you haven't already, download the official app for Android or iTunes. Yes. Or both if you got that burner phone. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you hide it for the cops. Yeah. You never know when you're going to be on the lam and you got that burner phone. You want to get some <laughs> entertainment. It's good. From the app, you can do everything. You can call the show. Uh, you can link to our YouTube, our social media. You can go to the webpage and chat. Um, and, of course, you have access to every single episode we've ever released at the touch of a fingertip. Oh, yeah. It's always free. I uh, just want to say thank you to those that have been leaving reviews. We got a brand new review on iTunes this week. It's great. We are currently the second highest rated Raiders podcast in the world on iTunes right now. Man. So that's official. We're close to number one. So if you're a big fan of the show, if you consider yourself a pillager, there you go. Make sure you just leave those reviews. Yeah. Get us to number one. That's it. At least at least let us be the number one Raiders podcast. Yeah. And that's pretty you know, cool. If you really a, support us like that. For an upstart like us, it's pretty cool. That's pretty really cool. cool, man. That's really cool. And that's that's on that's on the backs of, of all the pillagers out there because if y'all weren't listening, 
Me and Shay would just be having regular conversations. <laughs> Kane and us would be having regular conversations. This is what we do. We this just, is what we do anyways. We just yeah. put a mic in front of our face. And, yeah, we're just like, hey, you know, we like to talk this shit all the time, so <laughs> we might as well put some put this on, on tape, right? Let's record this, man. And uh, again, I encourage you guys to leave a donation if you like the show, even if it's like a buck a week, a little bit of something helps us out. Um, we got some great donations this last week that's going to make our banners and our tablecloth um, possible this yeah. year out at the tailgate. And we're still trying to gather equipment for that tailgate, a, a, um, a power, uh, ba- basically like a power generation generator, a, a power block, um, looking for a canopy, stuff like that. So we're gearing up. Um, anything that you give us goes to making the, the show bigger and better, the production quality up every week. So that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we appreciate all the help so far. So are you ready to get into this? Yes, I am. All right. While the Oakland Raiders star defensive end Khalil Mack waits for a new contract, one of his teammates had a message for general manager Reggie McKenzie. Uh-oh. They need to pay him. Raiders defensive end Bruce Irvin said on live Instagram on <laughs> Mac's account on Saturday, hey, Reggie, pay him. <laughs> We've talked about this before, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Yes, that's the obvious. They need to pay him. It's a domino effect, guys. Right. Just hang in there. Yep. May or may not get done in, uh, this year. You know people don't like it when you say that, Kenny. <laughs> no, <the, laughs> our lessons dropped off significantly last week. I think that was why. <laughs> people are like... What had nothing to do with the late release date? Just uh, yeah, but this podcast <laughs> people were like, This podcast is, bullsh-. yeah. I mean, no. y'all said, Oh, June 22nd, and that's when car signed. Well, it's July 1st now, <laughs> so unless he's gonna announce he's going to the Philadelphia 76ers, <laughs> this may or may not happen in the next few weeks. All right, <laughs> Kyle Cockerham. Uh oh, say that three times fast. Uh, I'd, don't get myself, do I'd get myself in trouble with that one. <laughs> uh, I don't want to bash anybody. It's not It's not really in my realm to bash anybody. But Kyle Cockerham, you found yourself on a slow week, and you put yourself out there. And this <laughs> is a side I like, the Silver and Black Pride. Kyle Cockerham wrote an article about a key matchup in training camp. It's called Key Raiders Training Camp Matchup, colon, Colton Miller versus Khalil Mack. In it, he makes the astute observation, quote, unquote, <laughs> To keep it 100, the most important thing about Miller versus Mack in camp is it means Mack is in camp. Right. Captain Obvious Award goes to Kyle Cocker. <laughs> now, Kyle, you write for a good site, which means you've done a lot of work to get to that site, so I'm not saying this in any way to tear you down, but I'm just using you as an example for how slow shit is right now. <laughs> it's really slow right now, man. So. Keep up the work, Kyle. <laughs> that was a reach, dog. Um, I don't know if you have a quote over there, so you're probably just doing your job. So it's all good. I, I rarely write, so it, this is all in love, Kyle. If you do listen, <laughs> to doubt you do, but if you do listen, man, it's all love. But uh, yeah, tsh, had to use you as an example. Sorry to put you on blast, Kyle. <laughs> hey. Speaking of Mac, he recently appeared on an IG post posing the question, which QB would you build your franchise around? Carr or Jimmy G. Now, just to clarify, Mac didn't pose that question. He appeared on a post that posed that question. Yes, 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 yes. I believe uh, NFL uh, Network put that out. So talk about this, Shay, because you brought this to my attention. Yes, yes, I brought that to your attention. I was actually going to post it on Twitter when I saw it, and then um, I got caught up with daddy duties. Then I came back to Twitter, and it was all over the place. And I was like, all right, I'm just not going to post it no more, because then I'm just going to look like... It's redundant. Yeah, redundant, right? Yeah. Um, but... um. Yeah, I saw it, and it was good to see, um, you know, at least visually see Khalil Mack's words in support of his Raider teammate, right? Yeah, something. It lets you know, all right, man, like, it's okay. Take a deep breath. Exhale now. Khalil Mack is still a Raider. Right. He's still loyal to his boy, DC. He's still loyal to the Raiders, even in in just three words. DC was it? No, two words, actually. DC, easy. That was it. That's all. Easy. <laughs> That's all. Easy. That's all I said. So, DC, easy. <laughs> Done. Somebody needs to put a post out there. Who's the best pass rusher in the league, Aaron Donald or Von Miller? And wake Khalil Mack up. Yeah. What about what? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> not that you're not in the NFL, but get it. Come on, man. Get in camp. But, but, but to go back to that post, 
I mean, that, that that was just a ridiculous ass post. We'll get into that. We're probably going to get into that a little bit more. Just talk Let, about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. Yeah. That was just like, it's quick hits. Yeah. So I was, maybe we're going to we wait. Can put it, you, Kane's Corner? You want to park that for Kane's Corner? Maybe let's do it a quick, let's do it on Kane's Corner. All right, let's park because that. Because it is quick hits and I can get really angry right now. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> save that. I'm carry that emotion through the show. Let's save it for when I got at least a, a at least two beers in me. Two. Uh, right now I'm halfway through one. Are those IPAs too? This is a nah. This is the Lagunitas little something ale. Okay, you know that's some, like some easy ale. Is that like a session ale? Is that what it's they call it? It's a session. It? Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not so, too strong. A session ale is like a daytime beer, right? It's like supposedly. It's a, it's a like it's what you're supposed to be drinking in a hot ass room like this. Okay, to refresh yourself. Oh, okay, <laughs> without getting into trouble like you did last weekend. There you go. But not on this show. Not on this show. I got in trouble on the Saturday before the show. That's going to happen next month when we bring these drink tank boys in Woo! here. Woo! Yeah. As I happen. said, we're going to have, we're going to have, make sure we have like a taqueria a okay. catering. A taquero? Yeah. <laughs> to recover. Let, let, let that tortilla soak up that alcohol, bro. <laughs> I want to make sure we have an air conditioner. For, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> Uh, Raiders rookies visited Facebook and unanimously agreed KO is the strongest Raider on the team. Key and Hurst, notably, are both happy to be his teammates and not on the other side of this beast on game day. Uh huh. Got nothing to say about that. Mm. Just thought I'd throw it out there. there. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> slow week. <It's> slow week. <laughs> Happy birthday to Mike Haynes, Richard Mostardi, Cleo Montgomery, Dave Waymer, and last but not least, happy birthday to Bobby Hamilton. Some of those names you may or may not recognize. Some of those guys are Cuddy Raider players of yesteryear, mm. but you definitely got to know who Mike Haynes is. Yes. Uh, shout out a happy birthday to all these fellas. Yes. We like to do birthdays on the show, but slow happy week. Bu- you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> slow week. Slow week. Slow week. Yeah, but happy birthday to all you former Raiders and Raider legends. Huh? For sure, for sure. Um, those of you that listen to the audio version of this podcast, pay it no mind because your breaks are always the same length. Uh, but those on the YouTube stream, whether live or, or watching back, we're going to do an, we're going to make an attempt to make those breaks go a lot quicker today. Mm. It also gets us out of the studio much earlier, which is everybody benefits. So um, I say that because we're coming up on a break right now. We got Sean Hildebrandt coming on. Uh, you may know him as Hawaii Sean, or uh, I think it's Oahu Raider or something like that. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll he'll set that straight when he comes on. But he's a longtime writer for the Raider Ramble. Uh, very prolific on Twitter. Got a lot of followers. Tweets a lot. Funny dude. Mm-hmm. Lives in mm-hmm. Hawaii. Um, interacts with us often. But today we get a chance to interact with him on the air. Yeah. So yeah, he's nervous. He said. Ah, don't be nervous. Yeah, man. he's like, you guys are the professionals. I don't. We're not that professional. No, <laughs> I laughed, man. I was like, really? I put it in quotes. Those are professionals. <laughs> Is um, that what we're being called? I don't know. Doing it wrong. Ooh, it's questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all, man, we should stop promoting this show. It's getting too big. People are gonna be expecting like professional things out of us, right? Oh man, fuck that noise. <laughs> Can't say that on CBS Sports Radio. That's right. That's not very professional, right? <laughs> All right. But, um, yeah, we're going to take a short break. Chase is going to crack, crack open another session ale. I'm almost done with that one. Yeah, so, yeah. Done. I'm going to get a little more water. I just down my coffee. And Sean is waiting in the wings. Anything you want to say? No, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah. We got you. Peace. All right, we're back, and we're joined this week by Sean Hildebrandt from RaiderRamble.com. You may know him on Twitter. He's a great follow on Twitter. Many of you guys are following him on Twitter. Sean, how do people find you on Twitter? Hey, uh, not too hard. Uh, um, I have uh, My tag name is Hi, H-I, Sean808, but uh, my handle is at Oahu, O-A-H-U underscore Raider808. Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm assuming the 808 is the area code and the high is short for Hawaii. Correct. Very good. Very See, told you, you're the utmost professional at this. <laughs> I'm just really good at stalking people online. <laughs> and uh, I, I know how to pick up those clues. 
Very well. <laughs> right. Very well. You must be very good at decoding people's license plates, too. <laughs> I'm actually not bad at that. Um, <laughs> not too bad at that. Yeah. Although I've never pulled them over and asked them because I would be a step further than I'm willing to go. Right, right. But yeah, tune in to... Cross uh, the line, man. Yeah, Cross the line. Che and I are starting our own catfish podcast <laughs> uh, next month. So tune into that if you want some more tips on online stocking. So... <laughs> Sean, welcome to the show. Um, we've Thank try- you. Been trying to get you on here for a while, but you, you just had a major life event. Yeah. Um, and that event was <laughs> that you stepped down from Twitter for a while. And, of course, the, the, the minor event that was maybe a casualty of that is you got married. <laughs> um, so I wanted to congr- What a mistake. <laughs> I wanted to congratulate you on your Twitter hiatus, and I also wanted to ask you... Um, <clears throat> sorry, I got a little <laughs> choked up there. <laughs> how your wedding's going? Uh, how was your wedding? How, what's the married life like now for Sean? What's changed for Sean? Oh man! Well, thanks for asking. Yeah, the wedding was great, uh, beautiful, you know, magical, something out of a Disney movie. There you go. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, a little over a month now, and I think uh, a lot more adulting going on. You know, all your decisions are uh, linked to reality to your to your wife. So uh, yeah. Man, I'm just uh, I'm at the mercy of whatever she wants, <laughs> whatever is uh, the best for uh, our family. So uh, it's a beautiful thing. I'm I'm happy to finally seal the deal and uh, get it done in the off season, right? Get the contract go. done in the off season, so I can focus <laughs> on uh, Raiders football in a couple months here. You gotta be in training camp, Sean. You gotta make it to right, training camp, I know. bro. I got I'm, I gotta be in Napa in two weeks, so I'm pumped. Sean, how long was the uh, holdout before you actually signed the documents? <laughs> You know what? It was it was bad. It was bad. It was uh, I don't. Hopefully not as long as Khalil Mack, but uh, <laughs> let's just say we've been together. We got married on our decade anniversary. Wow. So, Ooh. Hey, but you put in work, you, you're putting in time though, man. Yeah. That's quality hey, time, man. bro. That it's it's loyalty. That's a, that's a that's a Raider thing, right? That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. what it is, man. Yeah. That's good. Ten years of pride and poise. Uh, you guys built a foundation <laughs> that not even a Hawaiian. Tsunami could knock down. <laughs> why you, why you trying right? to put that on them, man? Why are you trying to wish a tsunami on Hawaii right now? My boy just survived the damn <laughs> volcano, and I'm, I'm I know. Ho- like they, well, maybe they need that tsunami to just uh, dry that shit up. But <laughs> damn, <laughs> I don't know that it works. Yeah, we got the tsunami, <laughs> the, the volcano, but nothing's worse than the ballistic, uh, fake ballistic missile threats. Oh, that, that there kinda. you go, man. That shit was crazy. Damn. No shit. <laughs> Hawaii, man. Hawaii. Let's let's talk about Raider football, Sean. Enough goofing around. Sure. Um, I'm glad you're married and all that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this, I saw the pictures on Twitter, man. Yeah, they, looked everything looked beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought the, uh, the, the foam fingers were a nice touch. <laughs> really enjoyed that. Uh, anyway, let's get to it. Let's talk about the Gruden effect. What beyond the X's and O's? What kind of beyond the X's and O's? What kind of influence is John having on this team, Sean? I think the biggest thing that comes to mind, especially after watching the Jack Del Rio tenure come to an ugly close, is accountability. I mean, first and foremost, you know these guys are at a workplace on the team, and there's a lot of elements of personalities and things involved. But you don't get a good work ethic. You don't get a right team glue without having accountability and I know John Gruden brings that right away so for me I'm extremely excited I was getting sick of Jack Del Rio's pressers um, he liked to beat around the bush a lot um, he, he never really took a grasp of the team um, when a lot of drama was going on and off the field um, the way he handled everything was just terrible so you see when Gruden comes in I mean he's just coming in right through the door and he's challenging Derek Carr He's not caring about his accolades, his talent, who said he's going to be this good or that good. He's not looking at his contract. He's going to hold him accountable, and he's going to ask the most of him, and that's how we're going to see his ceiling get hit, and that's what I'm most excited about. Also, accountability goes right into the depth of the team. I mean, Gruden is the type that, you know, when we had struggles last year from players like Seth Roberts, when we had... Sean Smith being handled irregularly for his struggles. Um, Reggie Nelson getting torched. Those things won't happen under Gruden. He'll pull to the depths. He'll have the other guys coached up. They'll be on their feet. They'll know the expectations. And then we can handle adversity throughout the season, which last year obviously didn't happen, especially yeah. after the Washington game. The team just went flat, and it was easy to see. Um, but, yeah, the drops, the turnovers, the blown coverages, uh, the flags, the penalties, those kind of things that happen – 
John brings accountability to the team, and I think that's what you get the most out of people in a workplace environment, whether it's football, as a professional sport, or whatever it is you do in your career. If you don't have accountability, you're not going to have success. Yeah, very true. Mm-hmm. Uh, very true. I, I think, too, um, well, I mean, under John Gruden, this was a, a, an often penalized team, mm-hmm. but you never saw them get crushed. It's true. And mm-hmm. the other thing I said right when this all broke was Jack Del Rio. One thing that he did was he let his personal matters get into the locker room with his his activity on Twitter. Yeah. And um, John Gruden doesn't care what your political party is. His political party is the Oakland mm-hmm. Raiders. That's right. And, that's and right. That's what it's all about. For him, his religion is football. His political party is the Oakland Raiders. And that's where it all stops. And that's where it starts. And I don't even know that John has a smartphone, so we don't even have to worry <laughs> about him on Twitter, bro. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. So I, I agree with that. Just a major overhaul, just a, a giant personality change from the top down on this team. I think, I think John's going to be big. Um, we did ask the question last week, who's poised to have the biggest influence on this team? Sean, will it be Paul Gunther or will it be John Gruden? This one, that's easy to me. It's Gruden. Gunther is just an accessory to Gruden. Gruden's here. He's got the 10-year, $100 million contract. He's the, the guy that's got this uh, Oakland nostalgia of his former stint, bringing the team. That was the last time we saw sustained success. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the big media personality. He's a star. Every player in that locker room knows John Gruden well. They've laughed at him. They've admired him. They've seen him hoist up a Super Bowl trophy. They've seen him at the top of the game, top of the media game. Everyone turns to that guy. So, you know, Gunther, we all expect great things from him, as I do. But to me... It, this is Gruden's team, man. I mean, talk about how many years Mark Davis has been trying to convince this guy to come back and, and save the disaster franchise we've been. And finally he does, and he, he's, got, he's got everything. He's Chucky, man. People know Chucky. They, a lot of these players, the ages they are, you know, they grew up. They saw hints of that growing up. And when that guy's in the room, he just demands respect. You look at all the players, Bruce Irvin, um, namely, you know, kind of a vocal, outgoing, spoken guy on the team. He's already talking about people buying in. Donald Penn, you know, a little controversy behind him, but, you know, he's been a perennial all-star since joining the Ra- Raiders, and he's speaking it too. And you've seen Carr. He's just gushing out towards this guy. He knows mm-hmm. people are kind of questioning, hey, you know, can Carr handle the personality of Gruden? And I, I really didn't like when that came out because – Carr is rising to the challenge. He knows he has to get there. You know, last year was a safe environment. So, to me, it's Gruden, man. He's got the vision, and uh, he, he's the guy that's going to take us here. And, and he sent a message, right? Yeah. He has the biggest influence because he came in, and uh, look, we all wanted to go. We can battle about it all we want, but Crabtree had issues, right? He had personality flaws. He had, uh, you know, off-the-field stuff. He put himself before the team. Guess what? He shipped out. He's gone. Marquette King, same thing. Gone. Shipped out. He's gone. So that's the influence. The team sees that. The players see that. They know that you're going to be held, again, like I was talking before, accountability. So he's got the influence, man. I mean, this is, this is a big, big offseason signing. This is some of the biggest news to happen to the Raiders since, since the last time we were in the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, yep. uh, I want to fire a question at you right now from one of our listeners who's following along on YouTube Live. Uh, we Our stream is delayed, so you, they're not hearing it as we're saying it, so it's rare I get to catch one of these questions while we're still sort of on the topic. But he wants to know if JDR gets another job, and if he does, what team does he land on? Oh, shit. Um, before Sean answers this, I just want to say the JDR has no incentive to go out and get another job right now. Let's remind everybody that Mark Davis is still paying Jack Del Rio. That's right. So, Sean, what do you think about that? Does JDR land on another, another team this year? If not this year, maybe next year. And Where would you see him going? Right now, I think it's a crapshoot, but maybe you know something I don't know. I'd say he's, he's not going to be employed by an NFL team right now. He's got a, one of his sons, is, I believe, still attending University of Florida. So I would expect he would use this opportunity, basically being on a paid vacation, to mm-hmm. you know take the time to uh, follow his son's collegiate career, attend the games, be around the university, and things like that. Um, I would be shocked if he was given any sort of an NFL coordinator position just for how so many things unraveled poorly under him in his Oakland tenure. And let's not forget, he had a, he had a very good team in Jacksonville that fell, uh, that unraveled under his uh, watch as well. So I don't even understand what the best part of his career has been outside of defensive coordinator for the Broncos. That was a talented team. that had equipped Talib, 
Von Miller. I mean, they were stacked. So yeah. you can't really look at anything in his career and say he's done a good coaching job. I mean, he, he's a former NFL player. He has that, that going for him, and he's been there in the trenches. But, ah, man, I would be shocked. I don't think that guy gets a sniff at an NFL job. Yeah, you know, that's that's a good point. I mean, what do you think, Che? With everything that unraveled last year specifically, I mean, that if we had social media during the days he was in Jacksonville, we may have learned a lot of things back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, would you agree with Sean? It's going to be really hard for JDR to find a spot until this all cools down. I do. I agree that it's going to be hard for him to find a spot. I also agree that he doesn't really have any pressure to find another job. Yeah. Right. Um. But he did mention something about his son being in. You know playing college ball and, and yeah. going out to see that, maybe he ends up in college, bro. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't That's, be surprised. That wouldn't surprise me if he ends yeah. up coaching college ball at some point. Um, but I think it's going to be a while before he gets a, a, a call from an NFL team saying, hey, yeah. you want to coach? Because <laughs> he didn't do very much of that, dude. Yeah, I think you yeah. might uh, he's more likely to find him in a Napa Auto Parts commercial <laughs> next year <laughs> than anything. He just looks like the type, you know? I don't know. Napa know how. <laughs> uh, this segment sponsored by Napa Auto Parts. Um, Sean, who's who's going to be the breakout star on this team in in 2018? I'm saying breakout star, not Carr's going to finally have his breakout season. Like, who's the breakout star? Who's the guy folks aren't expecting to see? Mm. Mm, I think there's some layers to that. I think if I'm going to pick a name, it's got to be Conley, Gary on Conley. I mean, he's. He's kind of set up for success, but that hinges a lot on his health, and yeah. that's kind of not something you want to bid all your money in, but I honestly think it's Conley. I think he, he's taking the time to get fully healthy. He's on a staff that's going to take care of his injury correctly and not, uh, not all the snafus that went through last year with mm-hmm. Jack Del Rio, Reggie McKenzie. I think they understand what they have there, and if you look at the guy's college film, he just completely blankets people. He's athletic. He uses his arms well. He's a ball hawk. I think we saw that in the Jets game last year, yep. um, defending a couple passes. I, and I remember tweeting that day saying, I've never seen a corner go for a ball like that since Namdi Asamoah. And he was a rookie, man, and he didn't get much camp time because of his shin splint injury, whatever you want to call it. But um, I think it's Conley. And with that D-line, getting those hopefully upgrades on the pass rush, Arden Key, Maurice Hurst, um, P.J. Hall, and then you got Urban playing full-time on the edge, and hopefully when Khalil Mack signs the dotted line, we're just looking at an upgraded pass rush. And when you're a good ball-hawking corner, you know the timing of you know, the pocket presence of the quarterback. You know when that ball's coming out. So I really – it's not only just something I hope to see, but I'm pretty confident that, that that's the guy that by the end of the year we might see him as a Pro Bowl um, a Pro Bowl nominee. Um, and then also if I had to defer after that, I would probably say Maurice Hurst just because, again, the, the upgrades on the D-line, uh, Khalil Mack demands so much attention. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Maurice Hurst puts together a, a huge season as well. Um, but for me, yeah, it's Conley, man. And uh, it, it's time, and uh, I think he's motivated, and he's got a good corner opposite of him. But, um, man, I'm just, I'm just really hoping it comes to fruition. But I think that's, uh, that's for sure the direction. That's the star. And uh, I got another another question for one of our listeners. This kind of goes hand in hand with that because Conley's on that Paul Gunther coach defense. Um, I'm sorry, <clears throat> you just he's throwing another question at me. I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come on, you're professional. <laughs> uh, he wants to know if, if we're going to see <clears throat> a ton of disguised blitz packages with Gunther in charge of the defense. Do you think? You know, I- I don't know. I, I think there'll be some hybrid formations. I think, you know, he's hinted that, you know, Khalil Mack will move around on the defensive line, interior, exterior. He might stand him up, drop him in the coverage. So, I mean, after watching Ken Norton Jr. defense, we're going to see a lot more disguised things pre-snap. Um, I, I think we have the ability to do that because we have better pass rushers. We also have an upgraded uh, coverage specialist in uh, Derek Johnson, a linebacker with a high IQ, veteran savvy. And then you look at Nicholas Morrow's role, who the staff is gushing about. That guy can cover people, too. So when you can cover people in the intermediate passing game, that's when you can afford to send up extra people. That's when you can afford to sneak up people in the secondary in the box. And I I think that's what we really need to look into. I think guys like Carl Joseph, that guy, when he's playing downhill in the box, that's when he's the best. And I I really Mm -hmm. hope to see him um, coming over the line of scrimmage at times in the season. But 
Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, we're going to see more blitzes, more disguises, uh, more varied schemes. And I think that's something that, you know, we have the personnel to do and the coaching and scheme behind it. Yeah, and what I was reading in that SI article that came out last week about Paul Gunther is that he had his hands cuffed a bit under Marv Lewis because Lewis is mm-hmm. a defensive coach as well that doesn't like to blitz, but that Gunther actually has um, over uh, over two dozen blitz packages up his sleeve. So uh, I, I think what you're saying is correct about the mid-level pass coverage, but depending on how things unravel this year, different offensive wrinkles we see, depending on who the matchup is, I think you're definitely going to see a much more aggressive defense either way. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that answers your question, Mr. Sean Grogan. Um, I see you got another question there. We're going to park that right now. We're going to keep moving forward here with Mr. Sean Hildebrandt. Uh, who's going to have the biggest bounce back this year? Is it going to be Marshawn Lynch, Amari Cooper, or possibly even a guy you're excited about, Doug Martin? Man, that's tough. I mean, you look at that trio of those players, uh, the, the easier answer is all of them. But if we got to individualize who's going to, you know, see the biggest jump of a bounce back season. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Gruden came in and he's already said, you know, Cooper's going to be the focal point of this offense. And a lot of people up in arms about that. And I, but I, you got to grab onto it. You look at Cooper last year. I mean, he had 680 yards and seven touchdowns for him to double that. As far as yardage, I think he will be tickling like 1,200 to 1,500 yards, probably receiving. He'll, his targets will go up dramatically, and the scheme and everything, they'll get him in open space. He won't be uh, dealing with the traffic-type kind of routes they were trying to have him do. But I think, as of right now, I would say Amari Cooper. I would say Amari Cooper. I think uh, a lot of things are going to get cleaned up for him. I believe our trio of wide receivers with Jordy Nelson and Martavius Bryant I think that, and with Jared Cook establishing himself as a pretty effective target last year, I'm really liking the opportunities for Cooper. And assuming that we can get Lynch going, uh, or the, the stable of backs, the play-action concepts fit Cooper's mold. He can double move, um, he, can, uh, yep. and he can take short passes, coverage backs off, and he can get the ball down the field for big plays. So I'd have to say Mario Cooper, but I cannot sleep on Doug Martin enough, or nobody should be sleeping on Doug Martin, I should say. To me, that guy has the ability to pass catch the ball. Um, He's a change of pace back to run the ball, and he'll be in the best offense he's ever seen. He'll be behind the best offensive line he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. He's going to be with the best quarterback he's ever seen. He's going to be with the best coach he's ever seen. I really think people are sleeping on Doug. He's had two healthy seasons, and his two healthy seasons in his six-year career, both those years, he rushed for over 1,400 yards. (laughs) Excuse me. The rest, yeah, he had injuries. Um, he had bad teams and things in between. But I think that guy's going to play a very important role in our offense. And, I mean, when you look at when Gruden's first stint in Oakland, there was a year where he had Charlie Garner, uh, Wheatley, Zach Crockett, and John Ritchie on the team. So he's not going to just give the ball only to Marshawn Lynch. He's going to want a varied rushing attack. He's going to want different weapons um, behind that monster offensive line. But uh, for sure, I'd say bounce back. I'm going to have to go with Mari Cooper, but uh, I think Raider Nation needs to stop sleeping on Doug Martin. Yeah, yeah. fair yeah. enough. And let's not forget that John Ritchie was the leading receiver on one of those teams. <laughs> it's true. My, Crazy. Mind blown. Um, are you at all confident Donald Penn will survive this season? <laughs> you know, Donald, like, he's been making a name for himself uh, on and off the field for different things, whether it's fighting fans or – <laughs> Weird kind of uh, divorce relations he's having, and but Penn's a captain. I mean, he's a veteran. He's one of the vo- most vocal players on this team. He's up there in age, but he's producing, and he steps out there. And you know, I'm confident that he's going to play throughout the season. And I'm also leaning that way because I I think the guy's Colton Miller coming in. I really don't want to see that guy take a snap at a starting left tackle this year for Carr. Mm-hmm. The division's full of great pass rushers with Von Miller and Joey Bosa, et cetera. So I think it's uh, important, but I'm confident. I mean, he's been injured two years in a row, and he's never had many injuries his whole career, so obviously his body's reacting a little differently. But I I think uh, I'm confident that this is his year, but I think after this year the team has to hope to insert um, one of the newer options, Albert or Miller at left tackle. Yeah, and this could be a, a whole uh, carryover from that JDR training regiment, which mm-hmm. seemed to injure a lot of players in, in yep. you know, during JDR's tenure, you know, both Jacksonville and in Oakland. So, yep. 
Uh, Sean actually asked a question about that. What's the difference between the conditioning coaches or the conditioning staffs? From what I've heard, Sean, the biggest the biggest difference is that this conditioning staff is is much better at gauging where a player is, meeting them there, and coaching them up rather than JDR. Basically, you know, just strength, 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 strength. Uh, get back out there. We need you rehabbing as soon as possible. There seemed to be a, a trend or a culture of impatience there, and just brute strength. Uh, you know, the flexibility wasn't as much uh, of importance. Um, you know, those kinds of things. So. That's that's what I've seen, the stretching and the flexibility and the, the willingness to slow down and go at the pace of the actual athlete rather than rushing them along. Those are the differences there, Sean. I thought I'd just step in and answer that question because it went so nicely with Sean's answer. <laughs> um, Sean, your pinned tweet on your Twitter account explains the pride boost you get when folks give you a disgusted look after finding out you're a Raider fan. <laughs> Speak on this because I think a lot of us can relate to this, but it's never really been um, articulated on the show. So talk a little bit about that. You, you know, people ask you, well, "You're you're an NFL fan?" Yes, sir. I'm a Raiders fan, and they're like, "Ugh," and you're like, "Yeah, why?" It makes I, us happier. I, I right? think it's <laughs> focused on you know the, the the culture and the history of the whole franchise uh, just presents itself as to where, well, no matter what age group you talk to. Everyone's got an opinion on the Raiders. So to be hated, it gives you a, a sense of pride. It gives you a sense of, yeah, I've been there through the ups and downs. I've, I've been the guy defending Al Davis or not defending Al Davis. I understand, you know, the AFL merger history and, you know, all the rivalries with all these teams. I mean, one of the most oldest decorated franchises in the history of the NFL. That's right. And kind of more so in this modern day time, you know, we've had a huge drop off of success, a lot of failures. But you still like to hold on to that, you know. So to me, I always think the whole nostalgia of being a Raiders fan is kind of about that. It's us against you, you know. That's the feeling you get. You see it when you walk around, you're wearing Raiders gear, and you can kind of see people scoff at you. And I like to throw it back in their face. And that's kind of what the fan base is about in general. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that I love that pin. That's my favorite pin tweet, you know, that, that I ever had because uh, Lee Smith is on there. And he's kind of like got that badass look to him. So uh, yeah. I call him the axe murderer at, at the hands of a Bath and Body Works employee. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I saw I saw you perk up over there while he was giving his answer. Do you have a, a similar feeling? Hell yeah, man. Yeah. I love it when people talk shit to me, man. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, all right. right, all right, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, you just, you're just enforcing my love for the Raiders, man. Right. You're just, just making <laughs> right. me feel even better about the fact that I ain't you. I'm I'm good right now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me why it's good to be a Raider. There's a picture a picture that I use for my avatar on PJ4F.com, my Discuss profile. I see quite a few Raider fans use it on Twitter, and I think it really sums up everything Sean and Che just said. Just said. It's a picture of, of Kenny Stabler that he took for this, I think it was the Sporting News, and it's him wearing a t-shirt that says Silver and Black Attack, and he's just giving the, the camera middle a finger. middle finger. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that's and classic. That's it. And MC Red said it best. MC Red said, villains in black, and we're, ba- we're about to attack, right? That's right. That's what that's it is. Right. That's right. It's, it's that whole outlaw villain mentality that Raider fans really flock to, that mystique. That silver and black, and uh, we love to be hated. We we prefer when when we're when our backs are against the wall, when we're being counted out. Last year, we were the darlings of the NFL, right? And you see how that worked out, right? Oh, you know what I mean. That's right. It's so, true. I'm, and everybody's back to talking shit about us again. So I love it. Good for us, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's good yeah. for us. Um, Man, last year was uh, that was that was a rough one. I, I can't remember any point in time where I've been more humiliated. At points, but like I said, it just it just re encourages that self pride. You know, you understand people love to see us fail, mm-hmm. and uh, we we definitely dropped the ball and failed in a lot of points last season. But you know, coming straight into this off season, you feel that fire get back up in the fan base, and that's what we're all about. You know, year in year out, people tease us because we'll tell ourselves we're we're Super Bowl favorites, but there's not many franchises that aspire for anything more than oh, hope we make the playoffs. So it's just kind of foundation of who we are, right? We're, yeah. we're kind of like you know, middle finger to everyone else, and we're, we're going to be about ourselves, and we're always going to take us to win no matter what kind of matchup we're in. So, man, it's just, you know, you bleed silver and black. That's what you're used to. You're used to going to the bar and people wanting to see you fail and boo while you're watching the game. But, you know, it, 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 it's, a, you know it's built off of, of decades long of people hating on the franchise. So. 
Um, Sean, you live out there in Hawaii, and, and if you're experiencing this out there, then I'm assuming that the NFL has a, a pretty good uh, fingerprint in Hawaii. I'm assuming there's a lot of football fans out there. Mm-hmm. Um, even mm-hmm. though you guys are literally on an island. Uh, that doesn't mean that the NFL stops, right? The NFL is worldwide. <laughs> it's, a, it's a global entity. Um, how did you become a Raider fan living out there on the islands? Well, actually, I'm uh, originally born in Connecticut, but I was essentially raised in California, so my fandom came in Southern California. I lived in uh, Orange County, not far from Los Angeles growing up. So actually, uh, one of my neighbors um, had actually, my friend and his dad had offered to bring me to a game when I was ooh, maybe eight years old, something like that. And uh, at that point in my life, I really liked watching, you know, I think, you know, all the good teams, but I never really had a team because my own parents didn't have a team at all. So when I went to the game, man, I was... We was in L.A. out there at the Coliseum, and, man, that was an experience. I'll never forget it. We were sitting way in the back. It was hot as hell. It was packed. We were playing the Chargers. Uh, Natron Means was the running back at the time. That might yeah. ring a bell. Yeah. And I, so, so that's like Jeff Hostetler era Raiders. Yeah. And then, wow. um, yeah, Haas with the, with, the, with the mustache and all, man. But uh, <laughs> I just remember sitting way up there in the back, and, there were these big, uh, big group Mexican dudes about four or five seats behind me. And, and back then, you could bring stuff into stadiums. So they had like a 20-foot flagpole, and they're waving the big Raiders flag. <laughs> and this guy is just hammered drunk, and he's yelling, he's going, Raiders, you pussies, you put And I'm just like, I'm looking at this guy, and here I am, you know. I'm just like this innocent white kid, and I'm looking around, and I see all these people telling the Charger fans to sit down when they stand up to cheer for a first down. And I was just like, and that kind of goes back to what you're talking about. Like people are repulsed by us, you know? So I loved it. I (laughs) I went home and I couldn't stop talking about it to my dad and my mom. They were, they were looking at me sideways, like thinking (laughs) like I'm uh, destined for some kind of bad lifestyle because I, you know, was so infatuated, but man, yeah, that, that's how it works. So, and out here in Hawaii, um, you know, we kind of have like a rebel warrior culture rooted here. So you get a lot of local true. Raider fans uh, for the same reasons. Wow. Your your parents are probably most appalled by you saying, you pussy. <laughs> yeah. When you were telling right? the story. You know? yeah. And that's what I, he was yeah. saying, Dad. I didn't say it. He said it. <laughs> right. I'm just and saying what he said. That's kind of how it was. And I could feel it in my family. Like, as I got older, my brother, um, my brother married a San Diego Charter cheerleader. Uh-oh. So... At, I actually went to, you know, I was at the wedding. I was his best man. So there was, uh, there was actually players uh, there. So, um, uh, namely, uh, Mike Skyfers, the punter for the oh, Chargers. Shit. Yeah, yeah, he was one of the groomsmen, so he was there. And uh, yeah, he he was a pretty entertaining cat. So you know, I told him I was a Raider fan. <laughs> and by the way, this guy is very interesting. Mike Skyfers is from I forget some small town. It might be like. I don't know, Ohio or something, but he, he, he was telling me about his life. He only got one scholarship to play, uh, to play, to punt, right? He was a soccer player and he took it small school, ended up with the Chargers, whatever. But this guy was a piece of work, man. For a white dude, I just started talking to him. That guy talked like he, like he's a whole different person. He's like, Hey man, what's popping? Let's, shoot up this patrol and i was like what the hell <laughs> you a white punter and uh he's hanging out with the mexicans in san diego man that's what he was doing hey man he, he had some <laughs> stories about uh about sea bass too though so he was telling me just some funny they were good friends so he was telling me all oh, about sea bass and man the stories he had on sea bass about like uh he said one uh I guess the Raiders were on a bye week. I used to always drive down to the Charger Raider game every year from SoCal. I always saw that game. But he said one time Raiders were on a bye week and Seabass came down to, uh, to you know, hang out with him. So he was there for the game or something. And he said he came out in the parking lot afterwards and Seabass had destroyed a 30 rack of beer already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's our boy. That's yeah, our boy. I was like, oh, that's Seabass. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, my family ties, it, it's just me. It's just me all alone. Like, my parents have, like, uh, my whole family has, like, uneasy celebrations. They're like, I can tell they're like, oh, congrats, your Raiders won. But I could tell inside they're like, oh, those dirty people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your, your family. You're, they're probably like, Jesus Christ, there goes the family. Yeah. <laughs> there goes the family. Um, so 
as you know, Raider Nation takes eating seriously. Sean, if you've ever been to a Raider tailgate, you know this for certain. What are mm-hmm. some of the best dishes Hawaii has to offer? Ooh. What do I need Ooh. to be eating when I go out there? And not all this touristy poo-poo plate bullshit that they try to shove down your throat. Not these dull pineapple <laughs> farm sampler packs they be handing out. <laughs> what, what do I really need to be eating when I go out there? You can give me dishes. You can give me establishments. Just We're all about food porn on this show. Hell yeah. And the time has come that you, you spill the tea about Hawaiian cuisine. Yeah. Damn. Well, I mean, the cuisine's different. It's uh, very multicultural. It's mixed. We call it like a local fusion. A um, few things you eat are actually, and you know, you would call or identify as actually like Hawaiian. That's more ancestral. But as far as we would call it like local food because it uh, has so much diversity to it. But number one, like at the tailgate, everyone's barbecuing the things. We'll get to that later. But when you're at the tailgate, what you got first is you got you got poke. So that's uh, poke. If you don't know what it is, it's raw cubed fish. Tossed in seasonings like onions, soy sauce, sesame mm. seeds, green onions, yeah. whatever it may be. So raw fish is a huge thing out here. Obviously, we have wine waters caught fish. So you got to eat your pulque. That's first and foremost. And if you ever come out here, I'd be happy to tell you where to go to get the best. But yeah. uh, we're always eating a lot of raw fish. Mm. Um, we have a big Asian influence. So we're eating things like, like edamame, like soybeans you'll see at a barbecue. That's what you snack on. It'll be in soy sauce and garlic oh. and chili peppers. Dope. Uh, things like that. We pickle vegetables, like Maui pickled onion, um, all kinds of things. So when we get to grilling, it's a little different. Like in Oakland and stuff, or wherever you go to a tailgate, you might see like a lot of ribs, right? Like slabs of ribs. Yeah. And those, but out here we do, we have like a Korean influence. So we do kalbi short ribs. So okay. those are a thinner style cut. But everyone's grilling Kalbi short ribs. That's like, you got to have that when you're out here. It's normally in like a sweeter kind of barbecue sauce. And then uh, one thing grilling out here is a lot of people, we use uh, Kiavi wood. So it's a local uh, um, on-island tree, and they use the wood um, mixed in with the charcoal to get a nice, it gives a nice smokiness and uh, flavor to it. It's very Mm -hmm. distinct. It's very different. Kind of similar in the mainland. People use different kinds of like, oak wood chips or cedar or whatever to smoke the meat, but kiavi wood, anything grilled with kiavi wood, you've got to get that. Um, and then like things like guava chicken, guava oh. chicken, super popular. So it's like a barbecue chicken, but, uh, there's infused like, uh, uh, guava in it. So it's mm. either a syrup or, um, a melted down juices, a little sweet, absolutely delicious. You got to hit that up. Um, out here we eat teriyaki beef. So, like you won't see, we we do steaks too with Hawaiian salt and regular seasoning like anybody else. But we do a lot of terry beef because the uh, Asian influence out here. Got to get you some of that. Um, and then everything comes with rice. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> there is no substitute starch out here in Hawaii. Everything's white rice. <laughs> so that's nothing you got to get used to. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of rice. You like that rice? I'm a fan of it, man. Come on now, yeah. I live. In, I'm a Mexican <laughs> Mexican household, man. We had rice every every dinner. Oh. Bro. Yeah. Rice and go. beans, bro. Rice <laughs> and beans. Is, that's the way we live. That's the way we survive. Rice is like a religion yep. to, to the Latin people. Hell yeah. The, the greatest thing about rice and beans is like that's what I grew up with. And then, and then of course, my, my lady, she didn't grow up with that. But now she always wants to go over to my mom's and pops to have them rice and beans, man. This is a, so we get we, we go have dinner every week, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, so, Sean, if, if I was in Hawaii tailgating what would the tailgate look like out of all those foods what would be the most common thing to throw on the grill to have at the tailgate what would folks be bringing out and i want to preface this by saying uh the tailgate group that we hang out with is is primarily um i think islander and filipino Mm -hmm. i could have that wrong but um sean what would what would we see out there in an island tailgate (laughs) i think number one uh might be the kalbi short ribs um but uh you know, just like when you say, what would you see out here at tailgating? What would be uniquely different is just um, kind of the games, the atmosphere. You know, you're out in the weather. We have, uh, you know, we have the great weather year round. So people are doing uh, a lot of good activities around the barbecue. Out here, like when we have tailgates and things, there's a lot of live music involved or a lot of locals bring their own instruments and play their own music. So it's a little bit different than people just bumping their own stereos and sound systems and things like that. Um, we have a huge gambling culture here. It's 100% illegal here, <laughs> but because we have a huge Asian influence, 
because gambling is huge in Hawaii. So everyone calls Las Vegas the ninth island. That's where everyone wants to go. Mm -hmm. Everyone got the money and time in Hawaii. They travel to Las Vegas so they can gamble it up. So you're going to see a lot of gambling, uh, little side bets and things going on. And, um, yeah, we play things like Portuguese horseshoes, kind of like, uh, kind of like playing cornhole, huh. it's like a wooden box with a hole cut in it, the same size as the washer with a little backboard, and then you cover it with like carpet, and you're just tossing washers back and forth, just like cornhole. But uh, uh, Hawaii is yeah, totally different, man. Uh, a lot of people would be drawn back a little bit in their uncomfortable zone trying to figure out all these things, but uh, it's definitely unique. But uh, that's why we love it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, I like the the sort of the fusion of culture and food Hell you yeah. get there in Hawaii. I, I I think it's next level. The kind of seasoning you guys use, the way you pickle your foods, everything. And when you're on an island, your access to resources is very different than when mm -hmm. you're out here in California mm -hmm. or even the middle of the country, surrounded by all these different food distribution centers. You know, where you go determines where you eat. Nobody's ordering seafood in the middle of Missouri, right? <laughs> you know, Absolutely, yeah, right. You shouldn't be getting poke when you go to Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Don't true. do it. Don't this do it. It's true. That's, it's risky. That you, Hey, you're asking to go to the ER, bro. I'm just saying. You're asking <laughs> to go to the ER. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've never been out there on the islands, but I, I hope to do that one day. My lady would really like to get out there with me, so it would behoove me to book that trip sometime soon. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You get some points for that one, bro. Yeah, that'll you're gonna be get some points. You're gonna get points just for saying that on air, boy. I'm just saying that. <laughs> she's, she's probably watching right now. She's now it's gonna happen. <laughs> um, my girl's not the biggest sports fan, but she does watch parts of the show, and that's that's that's, that's plus right there. That's bonus. It's a big bonus. That's just that's a move in the right direction. That's it. Yeah. Um, so, Sean, man, anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? Man, not much. I just, uh, you know, grateful for the both of you for having me on. But, uh, man, that's kind of that point in the year where we're just kind of on edge waiting for camp to start. Yeah. I'm yep. just, you know, anxious, obviously, as a Raider fan. I really want to see Khalil Matrix, Khalil Max contract getting. But um, I, I kind of was tweeting a little bit ago. I said, hey, this thing's going to go into about mid-July. And I, that's, that's kind of where I still see it at. I don't see it bleeding in too much or into August. I think that'd be uh, slightly worrisome. Either way, week one, Khalil Mack's going to come out. He's going to be the starter, and he's going to be ripping through def uh, through offensive lines, yeah. probably at his best rate of his career. I really think he's going to have a, a good shot at defensive play of the year again. You know, I hope so. Um, unfortunately, this, this deal's not getting signed this year, but uh, <laughs> I hope you're right. I hope I'm wrong, Sean. I really do. I, I want to say thank you for coming on the air with us. We want to have you back on when there's actually some, some things that we can sink our teeth into. Hell yeah. So yeah, Absolutely, yeah. My pleasure, man. Thank you, guys. Mahalo. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Mahalo, Mahalo to you, too. Uh, from out here in California, from the Bay Area, the heart of Raider Nation. Uh, thanks again, Sean, for coming on the air. Make sure you guys follow him, Oahu underscore Raider 808. Of course, you can read his stuff at theraiderramble.com. Sean's going to be getting back on the horse here soon and busting out some articles for all y'all. But make sure you follow him on Twitter. Make sure you're following the Raider Ramble as our spotlight on the ramble continues to ramble on. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, che, for, uh, for Che and for, for Sean, I want to say thank you on behalf of Raider Nation, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, take care, Sean. All right, thank you, guys. Follow. This was an awkward goodbye by me. <laughs> I got to say. It. No, you, it's okay, man. It happens. Uh, yeah. We, 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 so many words were said, right? Yeah. There were so many words that were said <laughs> in, that, in that little section. The, it got a little crazy towards the end. Hello, got a little, Hello a little mixed up. That, that Keurig pod was, was packed tight, man. There you go. Caffeine got me. Got you Woo! a little jittery. Yeah. Throwing out all kinds of words. Yeah. Was, <laughs> just as my cup was finished, the LeBron news came out and everything just started moving inside my body. Uh -huh. I was like, I feel a certain kind of way. <laughs> I don't know. It's exciting, man. It's an exciting afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything you want to talk about before we hit the break? Nah, man. Let's let's go ahead. Let's hit this break. Let's... uh. Let's listen to these calls. Let's uh, see what uh, the YouTube chat is all about right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then let's get back to these people, man. Yeah, man. We're check out the YouTube. Just like Chase said, listen to your calls. And, of course, Kane's Corner on the other side. Peace. Peace. Jay. Jay. It's Wap. So... We picked up a new fullback, I guess. His name was Ryan Yerchek. 
Um, or a new fullback, yeah. Ryan Yerchek, yeah. Replacing OG or Bogey. I don't know much about him. I know he has uh, 140 some odd catches and 1,300 yards. He's got some sticky hands or he's really, really good at catching the ball. There's a video of him catching the uh, ball while he's driving a jet ski, which is pretty cool. One handed catch. That's pretty badass. I hope he didn't get put on the team just for that. But <laughs> I don't know. Pullback position is just kind of driving me nuts a little bit. I think we were alright with Jermaine Zola Wale. I do like that new guy, Smith. Even though I just do some new. Your check or the po pogey guy, I didn't know much about, I didn't really care about him either. And we picked up a new defensive end, I think his name was Frosty Rucker, he's just an average dude, he's a veteran, I think he won like a Super Bowl or something, um, he's got 29 tackles and one and a half sack rushes, not that great, he's probably just a backup at best, somebody to kind of be a big dude to kind of play max position for a little bit. I don't know, maybe getting hard and see more reps. Who knows? I mean, I'm not happy about that one either. I don't really care. But that Jim Jack was pretty cool. Um, pretty, pretty cool dude. Liked what he had to say. Pretty knowledgeable. When I have talked to him, he's known just about everything, even though we kind of slightly disagree on Gannon, but that's, that's to be expected. But his story kept getting cooler every time he kept talking about it. I was like, dang, this guy's giving the Dos Equis guy a run for his money or something. Well, that's about all I got for today, guys. Um, you guys have a good one. Still hot as shit out here in the desert. You guys have a good one. Wapo's out. Peace. What's up, fellow pillagers? Jenny, Trey, Kane. Everything's good out here in Kansas City. It's your boy, Jim. Hey, man, I really uh, didn't want to talk about a Raider topic today. I just want to talk about an NFL topic in general with this new helmet rule that they're coming with, with Laura and the helmet. I think that, uh, that the fans should really be upset about this and let the NFL know that maybe they should change this rule, bro. Because, I mean, it's gonna be a penalty on, it, potentially there could be a penalty on any play. Anybody making a tackle could be lowering their helmet just to make a regular textbook tackle, even if you keep your face face mask up and you lower you level change you lower the way your body is and it's going at a million miles an hour in the NFL what ref is going to call that right and, and is that reviewable I mean a, a receiver protecting themselves or, the, or a running back protecting themselves uh, I, it just seems to me uh a ridiculous rule to have. I don't know. Jimmy Che, I know Kane gonna have something to say about it. But yeah, man, that's what I wanted to talk about. And for the food, y'all tripping with that American cheese on a burger. Y'all need to grow up, get you a nice piece of cheddar, get off the little American cheese kick, bruh. Advance your taste buds. Cheddar cheese go on a backyard burger for sure, for sure. Sorry, Kenny, I can't agree with you on that one. All right, I'll holla at y'all. Yeah, this is Jen. I almost uh, forgot it's Mike Haynes' birthday today. I want to give a good uh, happy birthday to Mike Haynes. Love that dude. You know, I'm probably dating myself. Uh, my favorite Raider of all time is Jack Tatum. And yes, the Raiders have a tendency uh, to go towards defensive back. And the reason why, bro, is because, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are other positions in football 
because it affects the game of football somewhat uh, more than the defensive back. But um, the defensive back, if when they make a glorious play, I mean, it's completely for the glory, bro. It's chains of possession, the whole nine. It's not just about knocking balls down. It's about changing uh, the whole complexity of a football game, you know, one play, and that's what the defensive back does. And, you know, I mean, that's just uh, how I feel about it and why the defensive back is uh, a glorious position to play and uh, why Jack Tatum is my favorite player of all time. You know, wide receivers thinking about you instead of the football. <laughs> <laughs> That's Raiders, bro. I don't care what nobody say. And defend my take on the cheddar cheese uh, for a hamburger. I gotta let you know the reason why is the cheddar and the red onion. If you're not putting red onion on your burger, you're not eating a hamburger, bro. It's supposed to have red onion on the burger. And it goes with that. You know, if you don't like cheddar, you don't have to get the sharp. You can go ahead and get you some mild. But if you got mild cheddar with the red onion, a big fat slice of tomato, whatever kind of greens you want to put on there, whether it be a uh, iceberg or romaine or uh, roman, the hobby you want to say it, bro. You throw you some nice greens on there. That. That's a backyard burger. For sure. Love the Raiders. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Yo, what's up, guys? This is AJ Humorous Fiend. Sorry about the sketchy phone call last week. I got Metro PCS, the Matt Flynn of cell phone companies. So, sorry about that. Hopefully, it doesn't sound as bad this week. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, little bitch has Marquette King. I forgot to talk about last week. I think that's just so hilarious that Marquette King would be doing his celebratory dance right now. I mean, it makes sense because he ain't gonna be doing that none of that with the Broncos. I mean, come on, Case Keenum? Keenum? Come on, man. There ain't... Marquette King will probably throw a longer pass than Case Keenum this year. Okay, maybe not. But that that football team is, is on the down. Okay, they still got some people. The Broncos still got some people on defense, but let's be real. I mean, they're, they're not going to be as good as they were. They're not going to be that good. The, their best player might be Marquette King this year. That's how bad the Broncos are. They're going to be. Okay? I mean, there's a chance, don't get me wrong, Case Keenum, you know, but usually what happens, I mean, we see what happened with with uh, Matt Flynn and, you know, Nick Foles leaving the Eagles the first time. I mean, this stuff don't always work. And, and when some of those quarterbacks were meant to do things, like Nick Foles, Nick Foles won the Super Bowl with the Eagles this year, but that was after a big old taking a dump on the football field. That dude sucked. Uh, yeah, after he left uh, Philly for the most part. But I guess uh, who would with the Rams uh, with Jeff Fisher? But anyways, Marquette King sucks. Uh, I think he's a sad individual that needs some some counseling. And uh, I, I'm gonna pray for him. You know, I'll pray for you, Marquette. Get better. Because you're going to be crying a lot this year. And I know it's going to be tough. And I know you're going to be on your social media. But from Raider Nation to you, you, you don't suck. And we're going to enjoy it. Bruce Irvin, go get that man. Go Raiders. And we're back on the air. Um, those are some of the callers. We're back here from the break. Those of you just joining us on YouTube, welcome. Those of you watching the live stream for the first time, welcome. And those of you watching the playback for the first time, understand that the breaks aren't cut down to the short segments you're used to on the audio version. They do play out. We're doing our best to make those shorter every week. So we appreciate your patience. Uh, use the live chat in the meantime to talk with your fellow Raider fans. And if you're watching this back after the live chat has ended, well, just fast forward. That's all I can say to you. <laughs> Once you see that, we'll be right back. The sign disappear. Well, that means we're back. So <laughs> doesn't take much to figure that out. 
Let's run through these callers, Che. Let's do it. First off was your boy Wop uh, talking about our new fullback, Ryan Yurchek. Yeah. We don't know shit about him either. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wop says uh, Ryan has sticky fingers. Young, a young Wop probably knows plenty about sticky fingers. <laughs> he's, he's got a way with words. Yeah. S- slick Italian dude. I'm sure he's run across plenty of sticky fingers. There you fingers. go. There you go. And I'm not talking about the uh, member of Onyx either. <laughs> sticky fingers. Who's gone on to an illustrious film career. That's true. He was actually featured in several episodes of The Wire. But I digress. <laughs> hey, didn't, didn't he also star in the TV show Blade? I don't know. I didn't never watch that show. Yeah, it didn't last very long. But mm-hmm. he was he was Blade in the TV show. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Oluwale will be missed for sure. With him gone and, and a big influx of fullbacks, I'm missing him more and more every day. Yeah. I don't know if that was a numbers thing or what have you, but uh, I really, really thought. I mean, I wrote a piece about how Oluwale was going to have a big year right. under John Gruden, and now he's not going to have a single year under John <laughs> Gruden. Um but yeah, you're right, WAP. Jim Jacks was epic on the show. We'll be having him back for sure. And Ronan Murray in the YouTube chat uh, had a question earlier, but he also wants to say uh, thank you as well to Jim Jacks for coming on the show. Jim was a hell of an interview. Yeah, man. Like we said, Jim took us through all walks of life, man. That yeah. was a fantastic interview, man. That was cool. Yeah. And um, for those of you that are on the live stream and didn't listen to the audio stream um, last week, the show ended abruptly. Uh, I want to say thank you for everyone for sending their thoughts and their prayers out to me. Yeah, um, This was a bittersweet thing. It was more good than bad, but there's still a lot to be determined. And that's all I'm going to say about this. This wasn't a health issue. Uh, nobody passed away. Nobody's sick in my family. So, But I do appreciate the well wishes. I just thought, I'd, you know, those of you that were concerned, put your mind at ease. It's just a big development in my life. And the way that it happened was was a bit, bit wild. Yeah. But... Um, Unexpected for sure. Could be some real positives coming out of this. So once it gets to a certain place, I, I may decide to to let you guys know what was going on. But along those lines, Gent called in. Gent's a, a member of my family, an extended member of of my family, as, yep. as a good friend of mine. Um, I just want to say thank you for the phone call we had the other day, bro, and, and thank you for your enlightening phone call this week on the show. <laughs> um, Shay, this this helmet rule it's it's ridiculous. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a little it's, it's I get where you're where you're going, man. I mean, obviously, the NFL has been big on trying to protect players, head injuries. Obviously, with all the court cases and the movies that came out, right? We just yeah. recently had a movie that came out, like basically putting putting the spotlight on the NFL. Yeah, this is a reaction of the you know to all that stuff that's been happening, that's been going on, the CTE stuff, like all yeah. that, all that that this is a product of that. So. I see what they're doing. It they're trying to they're trying to make it more positive. But you're absolutely right, man. Like, to what extent does does that start to affect the actual game? Um, and I think it is going to affect the game because, like you said, um, basically any time a player just brings their head lower than where it was, you know, to start with, you have the potential for a flag to be thrown, be it on the defense or the offense. And I think that. That's going to go really bad to start with, and then they're going to have to start making these compromises because what do, what is what is a player supposed to do? Because also hitting upright is not uh, the safest thing for a player either. You're going to cause other injuries, body, bodily inju- injuries, you know? So yeah, we'll see what happens, man. But I'm with you. I'm with you, Gent, man. I, I, I don't really like the, the, the rule either, man. Mm-hmm. I, I- I like the spirit of the law, yeah. But as we've seen so many times, it's the letter of the law mm-hmm. that really mucks things up because yeah. this can be interpreted so many different ways. And when tackles are happening at light speed in the NFL, and as you get guys now that are trying to be—and this is no pun intended—but trying to be conscious of it, trying to be aware of it, and possibly contorting their bodies at the last minute, right? You know, what are we sacrificing now? It's true. Um, it's true. And how much are we going to let risk dictate the outcome? Come of the game, I, I agree with the NFL and that CT is a problem. I'm glad they're coming around to it, yeah, and, and actually showing that they're aware of it now because they've been aware of it, and that's mm-hmm. that's the scandal, right? Mm-hmm. Is that they've been aware of it, right? And that they were they were keeping it under you know under wraps and they were hiding it and trying to you know yeah that's that's the bad part of it. But if you're gonna I don't know. If you want to help these guys out, here's what I have to say about it. And I don't play football professionally, so take this with a grain of salt. But if you're going to play the game of football, 
you're basically signing away. You're signing. A, you're you're basically admitting to the fact that you know there's a possibility you can get hurt, right, and, and possibly killed mm-hmm. in this sport. It's true, you have to sign a waiver when you're in in high school, man. Right. Gen- my my parents had to sign a waiver that said that there was a potential for me to die. Yeah. Right. And they were like, "What? Yeah." And I was like, "Just sign it. Yeah. I'm gonna be all right." <laughs> I mean, Jen, Jen's boy Jack Tatum, right, paralyzed Daryl Stingley with a clean there you hit. Go. There you go. But, but these are things that come with the game of football. It's like the most violent sport. That we watch as Americans. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think to a certain degree, you, you have to be aware of what's at risk as a player. But if the NFL really wants to help, how about giving these guys some long-term disability insurance? That's, that's, and I think that's the bigger thing, right? Right. It's, it's the after the fact. Okay, so you have players that come in. Yes, they are knowing that they're playing a physical game. They know that there's possibility that they can have some some long term issues physically, um, even mentally, right? Um, but you're the NFL and you're making billions of dollars a year off of these players. Let's let's do some 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 you know some backup plans for these guys, you know. And that's been the biggest issue. I think that's where the the biggest the, the issue is actually lied is is how the players are taken care of once their career is over. Right, most of these players don't make the gigantic contracts that a Khalil Mack or a Derek Carr is going to make, and so when their career ends, yep. they're kind of just out on their asses, right. right? And now they got all these issues, right? And so that's that's the big issue, right? Taking care of people, right? We have the same issue with our with our military and and taking care of our our our, our you know military that comes back and yeah, they're you know making sure that they're taken care of if they have any physical or mental issues, you know. Um, yeah, so good point. you got to look at it f- from that perspective, really. And I'm not trying to draw any comparisons between NFL players and military. And I'm not doing that at all. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if you're the person that's in charge of employing these people and you know what risk they're taking to be your employee, then it's your responsibility to make sure that they're taken care of once their employment yeah. has ended. And they haven't done it because they know that that's a numbers game they can't win. And that's taking too much money out of their pocket. And unfortunately, they enforce these rules, which start to denature the game a little bit, mm-hmm. a lot of bit. And the ones that suffer are, are the fans. And I hate to say it because, I mean, it's really the way we suffer. It's not the way these athletes suffer. That's, true. I worded that all wrong, but I think you know what I'm getting at. Right. But yeah, I think it's really the aftercare. I mean, if you really want to do something where the rubber meets the road, mm-hmm. start supporting these guys after they retire, after they stop playing the game. Not every organization has an owner like Al Davis that's willing to do that because Al Davis did that that's for true. many of players. So it's true. It's time for the NFL to step up, and I don't know you know, what the players can, union can do to, to, to support their own players that they represent because, let's face it, they're not doing it either. As far as I understand, I could be wrong. I'm just right. throwing that out there. It's my ignorant opinion, but... You know, let's help these guys out with some post medical uh, care. There you go. Um, it is Mike Kane's birthday, man. Mike Kane's does not get enough mention when you talk about guys that were members of the Soul Patrol, like uh, Willie Brown, like Jack Tatum, like Lester Hayes, like George Atkinson. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we mentioned at the top of the show. Definitely salute to Mike Kane's. Happy birthday to you, man. Yes, happy birthday uh, to you, Mike a, a true Raider. And like Kane, I mean, sorry, like Gent said, I'm thinking of what I'm going to ask Kane later. <laughs> what what Gent said uh, regarding, um, you know, players being aware of the player more than the ball, mm-hmm. that is some Raider-ass football. That is. Yeah. That is. Mm-hmm. And now with these new helmet rules, we're getting further away from that kind of football. That's true. You know, That's true. just to bring it all together. Uh, to your point about cheddar cheese, <laughs> I do not dislike cheddar cheese. I think cheddar cheese is fantastic. <laughs> I think that ch- cheddar cheese melting point poses a bit of a problem. It does have a higher melting point, right? Yeah, a bit of a problem. So I understand that the preference for some on American cheese. I did not like American cheese for a long time until I discovered deli quality American cheese. Mm. Sometimes it's white American cheese. Mm. Uh, no pun intended, again. <laughs> um, but if you get your, your American cheese from the deli, not that individually wrapped craft bullshit, you're going to get a better cheese than what you maybe understand American to be. Right. And that's basically what American cheese was made for, was to melt on a burger. So, it's true. It's um, true. And I think my favorite cheese on a burger has to be Swiss. So the point is moot. I think you said that too. I said Swiss. And, I, I'm a Swiss guy. And I, I'm not going to disagree with red onions on a burger. No, you, hell no. You red onions right. all day long. Fresh cut or grilled. Either way, I'll yep. take them either way. Yep. Yeah, I like a red onion. 
I just had red onions on my sandwich earlier today, man. Uh, onions on a sandwich also underappreciated. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> the look on your face is damn serious right I'm now. I'm serious bro. about my sandwiches, bro. <laughs> I was expecting a follow up comment. You just <laughs> stared straight through me. I was like, all right, just keep the show moving along, Kenny. <laughs> I don't know how long ago that sandwich happened, but he looks hungry right now. I, I wanted to say, I, I got a half waiting for me at home, man, so I got, <laughs> I got to get back to that sandwich. Uh, Jen doesn't know it yet, or maybe he does, but he's going to be a guest on this show very, very soon. Yeah, um, Jen. I was actually going to hit him up about that for this week, but I've been trying to get Sean on, but because of his Twitter hiatus, and of course it's his wedding or whatever, he wasn't able to come on the show, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. but we were able to get him on this week. So, Jen, um, I- I'll talk to you off air. We're going to get you on here as a guest because me and him are trying to do a little something. Probably won't be a weekly show, but we we got an idea. We've mentioned it before. I won't go there. This is taking too long. As it is. <laughs> but we'll talk about it maybe when he comes on air soon. Look Hell for that yeah. interview soon. And Jen's got stories, man. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't tell any of the ones with me in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. AJ, man, now that was funny. Metro PCS being the Matt Flynn of cell phone providers. Now I know you're a true comedian because you got Metro PCS. Right? <laughs> if true comedians can't afford AT&T <laughs> or Verizon. They got they they on that hunt, man. They they got to do the, their little 15 minutes every week, bro. That's true. You know, they got to yeah. get up there and do those shows when there's maybe some some people ain't even there. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's yeah. working hard. It's working hard on if, the craft. As a musician, I always said if you could perform for five people, you can perform for five hundred people. There you go. It's really awkward P- uh, performing for the bartender, your girlfriend, <laughs> and the other three man act that's about to come up right after. <laughs> and let's not get it twisted; they didn't bring anybody either. Okay, <laughs> by themselves, bro. That's how it starts. By themselves. By themselves. Yep. Uh, <laughs> oh, props to you. <laughs> That was intentionally horrible. <laughs> um, but AJ, man, uh, AJ, so the comedian stuff, AJ DeMello's a comedian. He was a little upset that his hashtag entries did not win. Yeah. He was like, I'm the real comedian. These are This is real funny. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean everything's funny, AJ. That falls out of your mouth. It d- 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 doesn't mean <laughs> that just because you're a comedian, everything's a killer. Uh, you know, you work on your material. You throw things out there, see what works, what didn't work. It's true. Your entries are funny, man. It just so happened that somebody else's rang our bell a little bit different. And this is all... Hey. It's all a matter of opinion. It's true. It was apparently it was my opinion on that day. So yeah. I apologize to you, um, but you'll get another shot. This is all your opinion going forward. I'm not taking any of this heat. <laughs> the, o- the only heat I'm going to take is the fact I still haven't shipped out that T-shirt to London. Oh, or, hey. To what have you. I need to get on there. That's not my fault. That's not your fault. But that's <laughs> if you're listening, it, it's coming out to you, man. I'm just... It's been wild. It's been wild. But AJ, um, with all due respect, you, you are a funny guy. Make sure you follow AJ DeMello on Twitter. Um, let's let's get it straightened out. The Broncos, they're not going to be great, but they're not going to be terrible, at least when it comes to playing the Raiders. They are a divisional rival, <coughs> which means nothing will go as planned. There you go. It, and, and I think we all have come, become accustomed to that, right, is that uh, if there's one thing that is known, it doesn't matter what any of the records are of any of the teams that are in our division. Every game that we play against our own division is going to be a game. Yeah. Right? And, and with guys. That's how it is. And with Von Miller on there, Marquette's far from their best player. So It's true. Um, but I, maybe you were just trying to make a joke. I didn't, maybe it didn't land. I don't know. <laughs> but I think uh, you know the Broncos, they're, they're not going to be challenging for the number one spot in the AFC West. That's what I think right now. Hopefully I didn't curse that. Um, but I think, again, like we just said, when we play them, it's going to be a tough game. Well, not according to uh, some of the uh, talk shows, the oh. NFL talk shows. Bro. Yeah. There's a lot of people putting everybody ahead of us, man. So Let, let them do that. Like, hey, like Sean was saying, man. Yeah. Hate on me, bro. <laughs> hate on me. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel more confident. Yeah. 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 I we, Like you said, I get nervous, too. Bro. Y'all look good this year. Shut, no. shut up. What? Shut your mouth. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Who let you in here? <laughs> the fuck out. But um, yeah, those are the callers, man. Thanks for calling in, guys. Um, some uh, some familiar voices this week. No, no new voices, but that's expected. It is a very slow time of the year, mm-hmm. and so we appreciate every call, whether it's one call or ten calls. We appreciate all the love, guys. Again, that number is four zero eight nine zero nine PJFF or seven five three three. If you can't put the letters together on your phone, <laughs> it's four zero eight nine zero nine seventy five thirty three. Phone lines are open, right? Now, you can call right now for next week. You don't have to wait around. Just call in. There's there's nothing. There's no topics right now that are off topic because there is no topic. 
There is no topics. The topic, so bring some damn topics, man. The topics go Raiders, man. Yeah, there you go. Even if you want to call in and just say, hey, go Raiders, shout out, blah, blah, blah. That's good. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I'm filibustering. I'm buying some, <laughs> some time for our boy Raider Kane. Raider Kane's out there in Reno right now. Yeah. The biggest little town, biggest little city, city in the world. City in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, might, that's their moniker, right? He might be a little bit, uh, a little faded. A little faded. Off that grog. I told him that I was going to meet him halfway at least. Right? Okay. Yeah. That's why I brought the beers, man. You're getting there. I was like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that you're not drinking alone. That's good. That's a good man. You're going to be all right. That's a true Raider fan. You're going right? to be all right, brother. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we like it when Kane comes in a little tipsy because, you know, he shoots straight. You know, he keeps it raw, and it's even amped up when he's got a little bit of that, that Dutch courage inside of him. <laughs> and uh, Dutch courage is not a pro wrestler. If you don't know what Dutch courage is, I encourage you to go look it up. But we're going to hit a break, and when we're back, Kane's Corner. Oh, yeah. Sure. All right, and we're back. Uh, unfortunately, right now, Kane, uh, I'm not I'm not able to get a hold of him. As we mentioned in the earlier segment, he's in Reno, and he could be. I, I know what I do when I'm in Reno. Yeah. They got those giant margaritas. The, Woo! Yeah, yeah. You can get an ad shot in them. They got that Fat Tuesday out there, bro. That's that Fat Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. you get that big that big mug, plastic mug. It's like the size of a big gulp, right? Yeah. And then you just add those extra shots in there, just straight shot. So he might be taking a beer nap in the hotel right now, or he might be on a win streak at the blackjack table. Hey, I hope so, man. And I'm not trying to get in the way of either of those things. <laughs> so if our man uh, calls us soon, we'll get him on here. If not, we'll get him back on next week. And um, if you're listening back to this, Kane, and you did miss the show, you will be missed. And we respect your vacation as well. Speaking of vacations, before we get into this next segment, Che and I will be taking a vacation. This in, is true. In two weeks, right? Not together. Separately. Separately. But we will be taking vacation during the same time. Yes. I will be flying out to Albuquerque. Yes. And you will be? I will be heading out to Tahoe, taking the fam to Tahoe. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful time It'll of be year. Be my baby girl's first vacation. There you go. First time out and about in the world. Take her to the craps table. <laughs> Have her blow on some dice real quick. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's not going to happen. Make sure you hit up the Harvey's Buffet out there, man. Prime Harvey's, rating. I mean, Harvey's is about the only, I mean, there's only what? There's only what? Like uh, three, four uh, casinos right yeah, there in that on that strip. There's Harvey's. There's Harrah's. I think there's Caesars. A, the, is there a Fitzgerald's out there? No, probably not anymore. It used to be Horizon. Okay. It used to be the Horizon. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. Um, It might still be the Horizon. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah, it's Harrah's, Harvey's. The Horizon and yeah. Caesars; those those were the the hotels huh. that that I knew. I go to that Harvey's, man. I just hit that prime rib station over and go. over there and you over. We <laughs> get that raw horseradish too. You always got to hit up a buffet when you go to casinos, bro. Those you are the, always those are the good ones. Yep, those yep. are the good ones. Yeah, buffets can be real sketch. They with, can be with the nice casinos, man. That's where you get some good food. The best, the best, the best buffet I've ever been to is the Rio's. Seafood buffet mm. in Las Vegas, bro. Wow, seafood buffet. We didn't make it there last That's time. That's it. We didn't. We didn't. Make, we didn't make it to a lot of places. <laughs> <that stuff. laughs> but the places we did make it to were put on notice. Hell yeah! They were like, "Don't let those motherfuckers back in." <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be interesting when we return for a Raiders game in the in the future to see how many posters we appear on. Right. Uh, as as we as we know it right now, the Cosmo is still standing, but I believe we blew out a whole section of that casino. <laughs> um, so if you're happy with the Cosmo renovations, rebuild. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> On behalf of Chase, loose change in his pocket. You're welcome. Inventing vape batteries. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, Ronan Murray wants to know well, Let's get it started This is the I see you segment I see you This is a segment where we pick out interesting tweets Blog comments YouTube comments And we kind of put them on blast But since we've gone with the live stream We've changed it up a bit We also allow these YouTube commenters To just ask us questions live on air So Hell yeah First off Ronan Murray from Did you say Ireland? 
Yeah. Ireland. Wow. Uh, he wants to know what our plans are for the fourth. Um, well, we won't be in Ireland. <laughs> I currently don't have any plans. The, the Guerreros are my neighbors. They, yeah. they tend to shoot off a lot of fireworks. The, the municipal fireworks show is right down the street from my house. It's true. So I'll probably be parked outside with a, a nice little fold-out chair. I do work the next day, so it won't be nothing too wild. Um, I might go over to my brother's, have a little barbecue, see what he's up to. What are your plans, man? Man, I really don't have any plans either. You know, it's weird. It's always weird when the fourth lands in the middle of the week. Right, because it makes it really yeah, it makes it really difficult to celebrate it. But I think uh, obviously uh, I'm from a, a a a small town that's known for a big event that goes on during the fourth. Yes. Um, so the rally is coming. That we have a big biker rally in our town. It's the unofficial um, rally this year because the city is not putting it on. Yeah, it's an unofficial rally, but vendors and people got together and decided yeah. to, to to make it happen. So um, it's gonna be it, interesting. I don't know what it's gonna look like. Because the reality is you can't stop, what is it, like 800 to like 1,500 yeah. motorcycles parked in the middle yeah. of your town? Yeah, yeah. It's a it gets crazy. See. It gets yeah. crazy. It gets pretty crazy. So we, we might do a little, but I, I think that's a, I think they're doing it this following week. I oh. think it's going to be taking place. I don't on the think, weekend. Yeah, on of, the weekend. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be taking place Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Um, so for the 4th. Probably just be chilling, man. Yeah. Honestly, chilling. Um, maybe go go to the parents' house, go go okay. see my moms, my pops, or something, something like that. Something well, well let's you and I stay in touch because if nothing's popping down there, if you guys want to come up, yeah, for uh, sure, you're more than welcome. I just you know if the fam's gonna get together and barbecue, I'll let them know. We need a for sure, extra for sure, for sure, for sure. Always plenty of food and uh, again a good 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 view of the fireworks here. There you go. Um, starting safeties from for 2018. James Mullaney wants to know who are the starting safeties for 2018. Here's my thoughts on this. I think your starting safeties week one is going to be Carl Joseph and Reggie Nelson. Mm. I think Reggie Nelson is actually probably going to start week one, and I would assume by the end of the year it's going to be Obi and Carl Joseph. Okay, those are my hopes. Okay, what do you think? Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the opposite. Way. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Gilchrist. I know. I'm gonna go Carl Joseph. Okay. That's that's what I'm going with um, to start with. Um, I know that Gilchrist is uh, may, maybe thought of more as the 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 Nickelback. The, the Nickelback. Um, yeah. You just don't want to say Reggie Nelson. I don't want to say Reggie Nelson. See it in your face. I just don't want to say it, man. I just don't want to say it. But you're probably right. He's probably gonna start and shit. We're yeah. just gonna have to deal with it. Well, we man, have to deal with it, Nation. Maybe it goes differently. I don't know. I don't know. But Rory Anderson just pulled up in the holistic pickle vehicle. Say that three times fast. He's at my front door because he already told you Gilchrist is the nickelback. Um, but, yeah, um, oh, the Northwest Raider wants to know, have we ever thought of a garlic festival pillagers party with a live broadcast? Um, that'd be great. The thing is, is I don't need all y'all at my house. Um, no disrespect, but y'all never clean the bathroom when you leave. I know how a pillagers party goes. And, you know, we will be broadcasting during Garlic Festival weekend. I do live across the street from the festival, uh, and Che and I are flirting with the idea of actually setting up outside. Yeah. Um, if we have the full, like, um, I guess, tailgate kit at that point, or at least most of it, it might be a, a nice dry run to do it right out That'd in front of the house. That'd be dope. That'd uh, be dope. I, I can't guarantee it's going to be a live stream if we do something like that because of the, the internet and whatnot, but... Um, yeah, I mean, that'd be cool. I, I, I definitely consider it. I got a lot of traffic up and down the street. We got a lot of Raider fans up and down the street here. Um, but I definitely consider it. The, the Garlic Festival is something I participate in every year. I took about a 10-year, uh, maybe not that long, but a, a long hiatus. Right. And once my daughter came along, I started taking her over there, and I enjoyed it a lot more. The cool thing about living across the street is I get to go in the morning when it's nice and cool, especially on a Friday. I get my locals through. Locals only three day pass, which is right. way hella cheaper than what you all are paying on a daily basis. How many passes are you limited to? Uh, that's a good question. My lady wants me to get her one. I don't know. I, as far as I know, I could buy one for myself and one for anyone that's with me because you need to show an ID with a local address when you right, buy that. Right, 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 right. So there's that. Um, and then uh, you know, I get the hell out of there after I do my first round of food. I got my staples. I get the the coconut fried calamari. I get the pepper steak sandwich. I get mm-hmm. the garlic pesto. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, those, those are my staples. I get to get a pack of garlic bread. Mm-hmm. I got to get my tin mug, my commemorative tin mug there from, you go. From, from the beer spot. <laughs> I collect those every year. Uh, maybe go through, get myself a, 
a tank top. And these are just local things I do. And then I'm out of there. And it cool off at the house. You know, however you need to cool off. That's right. how we cool off. Right. I usually have a few friends over. And then right around 5 o'clock, when it starts to cool off outside, I'm back in there for dinner. There you go. There you go. You know what I mean? I get another pepper steak. The pepper steak is where it's at. If you go to the garlic festival and you're like, I wonder what the locals eat. We eat the pepper steak sandwich. That's it. Bam. That's it. Go That's to, it. Get the combo plate number one. Go back and get the combo plate number two later. That one's not as important. Get combo number one. <laughs> get your half a pepper steak sandwich. Get your calamari and the scampi sauce. You got to get the pesto plate with the garlic bread on the side so you can scoop up the pasta, all that pesto oh, yeah. oil at the bottom. It's so good. Oh, yeah. Stick with Gourmet Alley. You really can't go wrong there. Uh, and then there's a few spots in around there. The, the calamari, coconut fried calamari is not a gourmet alley item. Right. But I always seek that out. I got my little favorites. And, of course, there's the uh, the Cajun lady. She's got the alligator. Uh-oh. Uh, she's got the, the snake for sale. Shh. Yeah, that stuff's pretty good, too. I might have to hit that up. Alligator meat's good. It's like a cross between chicken and fish. That's what I've heard. That's yeah. what I've heard. That's I like what it. I've heard. It can be a little tough, but if it's fried up right, mm, it's good. They got the uh, the the crawdads over there. You can get crawfish. Ooh. Crawfish. Um, there's a couple nice little barbecue. Yeah, you spots. don't you don't want to say crawdads around people from the south. Nah, crawfish. They get they get angry about that, man. They They're don't like, like that. No crawdad. This is crawfish. <laughs> and then uh, I think this will be the third year of the Garlic Festival barbecue cookoff. Uh, bad boys tailgates out there of course they, they're out there at the raider games so i usually go through there you buy tickets and you can go to all their trucks and get like taster platters dope and then submit your vote so that's always good um there's some good barbecue there's some great barbecue and there's some like why are you doing this barbecue <laughs> um, but everyone's got to shoot their shot so uh, shoot or shoot yeah shoot or shoot <laughs> so i'm all about them ribs and then I made a, a choice last year to go at towards the end of the day, uh-huh. and these guys, a lot of them had leftovers, and so you're only supposed to get like one or two little ribs with your ticket, and they were just they pushing all the food. They're like, we got to get this out of here, yeah. bro. Here, take another one. So that's another locals tip for you, but um, yeah, that that's... Yeah, this guy. This guy's hungry right now. <laughs> Northwest Raiders got the munchies right now, but I just went off on the garlic festival. But yeah, man, I'm a Gilroy boy, so that's what we do. We, we I think it's thirty five thousand people going in and out of there on a daily basis. It is the second largest outdoor food festival in the nation, uh, second only to barbecue festival out there in Texas. Okay, so you know that's big. Hey, yeah. take it. Number two, number two in that situation is not is not that bad for a small town like this. Hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. That's big. Um, but yeah, so I, one year I went and I was I was sitting there. There's a lot, people come from all over. And these folks I think were from Louisiana, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Do you guys do this every weekend?" <laughs> and I fucked with them. I was like, "Oh yeah." I was all just <laughs> yeah, be, come back. Yeah, come back. But it's just everyone shows up only in, in, in this weekend. <laughs> we just get together. Nah, we don't do it every weekend. <laughs> we were in it one year. My family was in it one year. My mom had a booth um, for the bakery. It was pretty good. Um, the good thing about the festival is a lot of the proceeds from the booths go to local charities, local organizations, right. the schools be out there, stuff like that. So it's a great opportunity for our town uh, to generate revenue. And there is some good food. I always, too, right in the middle of it all, I'll take my food. I'll go over to the demo stage. And watch a lot of these people cook. So we've been having some celebrity chefs come in. I think Giada De Laurentiis was here last year. Uh, but it's cool to watch the demo stage, to watch the local chefs compete and stuff. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's fun over there. It's hot. It's real hot. It's always hot. Super hot. Always hot. That's why you end up running through a lot of beers. You see some sloppy people out Dude, there, bro. One year, when I was young, one year uh, looking outside the, the window, um, there's a guy shirtless passed out <laughs> on my front lawn. I bet he was. Yeah. I bet he was. We, didn't, out. we didn't touch him or nothing. <laughs> we just let him be. He moved along at some point. <laughs> but, uh, I yeah, I got an invite to go to training camp from uh, Dirt Lot. Dirt Lot, I want to say thank you. But the reason why I can't go is the festivals that weekend. It's not so much the tradition of me going. I can miss a year. Not a big deal. But it's more or less the fact that I don't really like leaving my house unattended during that weekend. Right. It's, it's just, true. It's too it's wild, true. man. Yeah. It's too wild. Um, the town gets a little bit crazy that weekend. and You get outsiders come in. And it, there's funk, man. Funk happens. Funk um, happens. Yeah. So... Fools be set tripping and stuff, you know. <laughs> it's wild. Um, and then one last thing on this ICU segment. Uh, Sean Grogan says, I'm excited to see P.J. Hill. I think he means P.J. Hall. Playing alongside Hurst, they're going to give one of our ed rush, edge rushers a free run at the quarterback. I'm going to say pump the brakes, Sean, on P.J. Hall. I don't think... 
you know, with his measurables and his combine and stuff, he makes him a it makes him out to be a really enticing player. Right. But from what I'm seeing, is he showing that he's every bit a small school player that he was? Um, he's definitely strong. He's definitely talented. But I think it's going to take some time for Hall to crack some of those rotations. I don't think he's going to be the kind of impact player that he looks like on paper is all I'm saying. Yep. And that's no disrespect to Hall. Of course, we want to see him become that guy. Of course. But out the gate, I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to be a fan favorite because of what he represents Mm -hmm. and being the underdog and stuff. And I think that's really cool. I like him too. But don't get your hopes up too high for P.J. Hall just yet. Yep. Yep. Is that fair? I think that's completely fair. And I I even think that P.J. Hall knows that he's got a show, right? He's got a show. He knows. Yeah. He knows. He knows what he he's up against. He knows he's got a lot to prove. Um, so that ain't a bad thing, man. No. That those comments ain't a bad thing. It's just it is what it is. It's a fact, man. You yeah. came from a small school. Yeah, you got a lot of uh, a lot of hype behind you. But the the bottom line is is you got to show it on the field. That's it. And it, and and we don't know what that's gonna look like yet. Right. And, yeah, and we haven't heard really jack about him in training camp. So that's no one's pumping him up. It's no not one's a good saying, sign, you know. But, but you hear what what you already knew. He's a strong guy. Yeah, that's basically what you've heard. Yeah. He's a he's a real strong guy, and he's hella cool. Apparently, and he's cool. Right? That's <laughs> cool. That's cool. We like those. We like both those things. Yeah. But let's perform on the field. Let's do it. So maybe preseason game, he gets some. He has a big game, and then maybe we, we can get excited. Yeah. Right. He might be that dude that's like the preseason like marauder like. Like uh, Luani was last year, right? It's true. The, he, Luani it's true. was the champion of the preseason for Raider fans. <laughs> like, put Luani on the field, and that Charger came game came along. They put him on the field, and it was like, get him off of the field, <laughs> right? It's too soon. It's too soon. <laughs> now I don't think. I mean, Hall's not in a position to be that kind of a liability, but who knows? Maybe he's going to be the preseason champ this year. We wish nothing but the best for PJ Hall. Hopefully, he comes along and proves Hell us yeah. wrong. That would Hell be yeah. great. Uh, and, and prove Sean right. And that would be cool because what you're what you're conceptualizing, Sean. Um, I mean, that's the ideal situation. That's why we all got excited on draft day when we were like, "Who is this guy? Oh, that's who that guy. This guy's going to change everything." Right. Pump the brakes, everybody. Right. 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 <laughs> Let's right. come back down to baseline and come back down to reality. That's probably not going to happen right off the bat, but. Um, let's do some shout outs, man. Shout outs. We need to get a, a cool shout out sound effect. That's what I need to do. Not that I don't appreciate your shout outs. <laughs> sound effect. Um, so we're going to run through these. I haven't heard from Kane, so hopefully he's all right. Hopefully he's not in the ER or something like that. Uh, I don't. Th- I think Kane's more responsible than that. He's a vet. He knows how to park. Oh, yeah. We're good. We're good. But I, anytime I just. I'm, if he's, he's a Raider right. fan and he's la- and he's made it out for this long. Yeah. Okay, he's been a Raider season ticket holder for how long? He's been to so many tailgates. Yeah. He's still alive and kicking. He's all right, bro. He's going to make it out of Reno just fine, okay? Uh, you might kick my ass for saying this, but la- <laughs> last year, I forget what game it was, uh, he was coming back from the restroom at the tailgate, and we were all about to head in for the uh-huh, game. Uh-huh. And I caught him coming back the other direction. He was like, dog, I don't know where I'm at right now. <laughs> I was like, uh, I've been there. Yeah. So I just kind of walked him back. I'm all boom. That's that's the spot right there. That's the tailgate. Do do do. I think actually this was two seasons ago. And he's all right, right. I was like, take your time, bro. We'll see you inside. He was good, man. He was good. He rallied. You know, came rallied. Everybody rallies, man. Everybody Everybody rallies. Not everybody rallies. I've seen. I've seen dudes. Oh, that's true. Not everybody (laughs) rallies. I take that back. (laughs) I overspoke. Some people get arrested before they rally. But this is true. This is true. (laughs) I've seen some people. Pass out the first half of the game mm. and then rally. And they're getting into it yeah. in the second half. In the second half, all of a sudden, they're, they just got some uh, <laughs> some energy, man. <laughs> That's good. They're like the second line coming behind the phalanx <laughs> ready to take over. <laughs> that first line, they need a break, right? <laughs> You've been passed out all out. Get in there. That's a bad time to pass out, too, especially if it's a day game, bro, because oh, you got that heat just beating down on you. You're passed out for the first half. Woo. All bad. So we got to get you some water, bro. Um. Let's do some shout-outs, man. So on Twitter, Jared the Heretic, Jason Markham. Shout-out to Rudy R. Reyes, Jake Senesak, Burt Compton, DFF Stephane. I almost said Stephanie. <laughs> Kevin Sikorsky, the Fantasy Madman. Shout-out to Wade Hutchins. That sounds like a gangster name, Wade Hutchins, right? That's old school. That sounds old school. Bro. He, why, why does it sound like Wade Hutchins is about to drop the dankest soul album of the year? <laughs> uh, shout out to Mike Zimmer's ears. Probably not a Raider fan, but shout out to you anyways. Shout out to Ruby Quintero Walton. Good luck on your career. 
uh, shout out to Michael Brooks. Shout out to Gabriella Sarsparilla. Probably not your last name, but a delicious <laughs> drink nonetheless. <laughs> shout out to Brian and Lacroix. Probably your last name and also a delicious drink. <laughs> shout out to Seamus P. Barrett, Ultimate Raider, Margie Freedy, and the Fantasy Football Life. Also, make sure you follow uh, Blitzed NFL Radio. Just look them up on Twitter, Blitzed NFL Radio. Um, they followed us this week. We followed back. They spark great conversation, and they probably hate Tom Brady just as much as you do. <laughs> if you're looking to get some uh, extra followers on your Twitter account and you love the NFL, make sure you follow them and experience the Blitzed bump, as they said. It's a real thing. It happened. You'll get a bump up and some followers and some good people to talk to. Um, also, a big shout out to Kendra Stabler Moyes, uh, daughter of the great Kenny Stabler. Make sure you check out her upcoming interview with Just Win Ladies on the Out of Pocket Sports Network, of course. Oh, yeah. I don't know when that interview is dropping, but make sure you follow Just Win Ladies just in case. Yeah. You miss it. You can catch up. And lastly, we'd like to thank Jim Jacks once again for coming on last week and doing a tremendous interview with us. Also, special thanks to Sean from the Raider Ramble for joining us this week as well. It's been great. Um, before I hand this over to Che, I just want to give a shout out uh, to some of the folks on YouTube that joined us. Uh, JD Hightone, shout out to you, man. Uh, shout out to uh, Julia Ballone, who uh, commented on the Jim Jacks interview. And um, Sam Smith, man. Uh, and Ismail, I think it's Ismail86. So shout out to all of you. And of course, Daniel, who's in the YouTube chat right now. Daniel's a man that I actually got to meet recently. Solid dude. Lifelong Black Hole season ticket holder. He's Dapper Dan on Instagram. Make sure you follow him. Uh, great, great dude. Great Raider stories. He brought in his book of cards. He had a, a whole binder full of the Raider, the sheets. Full oh, of yeah. Raider grades, man. Some cool ones on there. That's dope. Some real That's cool dope. ones. Yeah. But, uh, you got to collect them cards, bro. That's what that's what the eighties life was all about. Bro. Yeah, collecting cards. It made me want to get back on it again, but yeah. I don't know how like strong that that's still going. Like that card culture is. I mean, it's going away from it. But if you got some, why not keep going with it, man? Yeah, I do. Yeah, keep I do. going with it. I got some stacks of cards at home too, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. All right let's get to these. Instagram shout outs. Uh, shout out to New Tone Ventures. That's actually my boy from high school, man. Hey, shout out to you, brother. He's a Niner fan. He's a Niner fan. But I'm going to shout you out anyways because you did give us a follow. Um, <clears throat> Louis Valet 42. Shout out to you, brother. Uh, Leah Dad 9164. I think it's Leah Dad. That's what makes more most sense to me. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Shit. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry if I get it wrong. All right. Uh, McQuery Rob uh, started following us also. Uh, Raiders real fan. Ghost Raiders 82. Forever Oakland Raiders. Uh, we got a lot of them, obviously, because we, we missed a couple. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Raiders King started following us. Uh, Janine or Janine 9. She doubled up on the nines, man. Nine, she, nine. Spelled, she spelled out the nine and then put the nine, nine, nine again. Nine, nine, nine. All right. Shout out to you, Jim Jacks Media, our boy who was just yeah. on last yeah. week. A shout out to you, brother. Uh, let me see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Raiders Lovers and uh, Raiders Fan Center. And last but not least, P Pagan 80. Okay. Shout out to you. Shout out to him. Lots of followers, lots of followers. Uh, there was some followers in there, too, uh, that I, I didn't mention because I wasn't sure of their uh, alignment. Right, right. I think some of the people I shouted out, too, not Raider fans. <laughs> I know Margie Freedy is a big Packers fan, but you know what, man? Uh, Margie, she started following us. Um, so did uh, uh, Rudy R. Reyes, who's a Steelers fan, started following us when we started following Blitz, and Blitz was shouting us out, and we were shouting them out. And uh, they're not fans of our team, but... They're actually very talkative on Twitter, mm -hmm. and they're very plugged in. So I would recommend just following them anyways for football conversation. And we play the Steelers this year, so right. that might be good to be following some of these people. I know on Bleacher Report, um, I follow teams like rival teams because I want to know what's going on in their camps. I want to know what their news is. I want to know the rumblings. True. You know, I need to stay on top of that more than my own team. I feel like I absorb Raider news just by osmosis. This is true. Right? This is true. When well, you got the nation surrounding you. Yeah. You're going to get some information. Yeah. You're going to get information. You don't really have to search for it. It just lands on your lap. Right. Yep. Right. You, I like I like your things, man. Yeah. I you like got to get, you you get out there. You got to stay informed. So um, that's it for this week's show, folks. Tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. Call in and leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. Get dipped in pillaging gear by heading over to PJ4F.com slash shop. Get yourself a t-shirt, a can koozie, a coffee mug, something 
Download the official pillaging app available for iOS and Android. I'm Kenny Stapler, joined as always by your boy Chip. We out here. Peace. Go Rangers. Just win, baby. <laughs> Yeah.